Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 18. This video we're going to be taking a look at working with our cranking fuel and our after start enrichment. Now we need to make sure we have these in place so that the engine can crank and fire off to have adequate fuel delivery. And once it fires off for the first 5, 10, 20 seconds of operation, it can have additional fuel supplied so we have stabilized combustion. This is a very specific task for our fuel delivery and we're going to be breaking down exactly how it works in this tutorial. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our prime pulse, our cranking fuel, and our after start fuel enrichment within our max ECU programming. We need to make sure all these tables are accounted for and set up properly so the engine will crank, fire off, and run properly for the first few seconds and have stable combustion. We'll find if we don't have this sorted out, the engine won't be able to crank up and fire because it either be fouling out the spark plugs or not delivering enough fuel and we get to take excessive amount of cranking to get it to actually fire off and run. And when it actually starts to run, if our fuel isn't right, it might stall out or it might be overly rich when it fires off for the first few seconds. So these tables are going to be very specific of how they're applied and we're going to be breaking down how they work and integrate to each other within this tutorial. First thing I want to do is jump up here into our navigation window. I want to go down here under fuel and take a look at these specific tables we're going to be dealing with. Under startup warmup ASE, ASE is going to be short for after start enrichment. We'll find in here we have our cranking fuel table, we have our after start enrichment table, and then finally we have a fuel priming table. Now the fuel priming table is going to be optional. However, in most cases you want to run with it enabled because it will help getting the engine to fire off and run, specifically when the engine is cold. Let's jump in here, back to startup, warm up, after start enrichment, and break this down with a nice graphical illustration of how these tables will be fitting together and the logic or flow of logic and order of operations of how this is going to work. Now coming up on screen, I have a nice graphical plot that's going to be on our left axis showing injector pulse width. On our lower axis, we're going to see that as a function of time. Now specifically, this is going to be our cranking or engine runtime. So you can take a look at the very left portion of the lower axis. That would be when the engine hasn't actually cranked and fired and done anything yet. And then as we go across in time, that'll be when it, uh, it's cranking, it'll fire off and then continues to run. So it's just going to be a matter of time and zero time would mean the engine's not doing anything. That's going to be the very start of that axis on the left side. Now taking a look at the values within the table or the actual graphical plot in the table. The first lines we see, those are orange lines. And we can see that's going to be a function of a injector pulse width. That's going to be representative of our prime pulse value that would be coming from our fuel priming table here. The fuel priming table will allow us to have a huge shot of fuel or a very quick huge shot burst of fuel being injected into the engine. A prime pulse table can be thought of as a priming on a carburetor where you need to get the fuel into the engine to get it to fire off and run. This will improve our starting. Now this is only applied for the first, essentially one revolution of the engine cranking. As soon as it reaches that one revolution, it transitions out of this prime pulse table and it moves its way into our cranking fuel table. And we can go back in here to start up warm up after start enrichment. And that's where we're at here in this cranking fuel table. And we can see that in our graphical plot as our purple line. Now the cranking fuel will be applied um, in a consistent manner based on however long we're cranking our engine over for. And specifically it's applied when our engine speed is below what we've programmed here under configuration and under engine settings under max crank RPM. Right now it's showing 300 RPM. So if we're below 300 RPM, when we're cranking over our engine down here, we can see it's zero right now, that's going to be focusing us into looking at and operating within this cranking table. Now, once we've finished off and cranked over the engine, we have adequate fuel and it fires off. It's going to be transitioning then into our after start enrichment, which is found down here below. We can take a look at our graphical plot. That's going to be representative of our green line. And we can see our after start enrichment. This table is three dimensional. It's based on engine coolant temperature, also our engine runtime. We can see in the table here that the values within the table, they start to zero out at around 20 seconds of engine runtime. Engine runtime is when it exceeds whatever we programmed here for the engine max crank RPM value. So that's going to be where that timer starts to count up 
and starts to go across our table here. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.